Very cool box. Wow. Unless it's the first album. Wow. And it, yeah, very, very close to the original, I must say. One of the sessions we literally came in after a gig um, and went to Stanhope Place at dead of night and, and played. If we were playing in London, we played to quite sophisticated crowds, trendy people dancing. If we played in more provincial places, we tended to have screaming girl audiences, basically. Although we were sort of playing a lot of rhythm and bluesy type stuff, but we were also being marketed as a pop band. Amazing pictures. And this was when we started getting a bit more used to being in the studio. Yeah, we were developing a bit of songwriting, an interesting shot. Our next drummer, Skip Allen, he was 16, he had to get permission from his parents to go abroad and things. A couple of people have said to me, oh, well, you didn't play the guitar on any of your albums, it's all Jimmy Page. No. I could literally walk it round to Blazers Club and see, I saw Ike and Tina Turner, Charlie and Inez, Sol Solomon Burke, Wilson Pickett. I was talking to some American guys and they were saying, you know, we didn't have that opportunity and it was brilliant. This, is, this must have been our blue period, straight out of mind. Uh, Phil actually had this idea doing an album which kind of had a bit of a theme running through it. It wasn't actually like quite a concept album, but it was getting closer. When you look at the titles, it doesn't quite reflect emotions. Although we were the only ones who knew it, there was a kind of thought behind these things fitting together. A real swinging London album. I like the sun, it's a very nice sort of ballady thing and it's Phil on a restrained mood. I think it's an absolutely brilliant number. Phil, for some reason, decided this was not his favourite album. This was kind of almost like halfway on, on our journey to SF Sorry. The record company wanted something which was sort of, they thought would be more commercial. I think if we'd have done so more adventurous, it might have been more commercial than this in, in some ways. Do you know something? This is almost worth it for the inserts this set because they're just brilliant. This picture was taken outside of the Abbey Road Studios. The taxi was owned by the photographer. Yeah, most of our clothing comes from Granny's. Some interesting pictures. We had enough money to record some demos. We recorded, amongst other things, Defecting Grey, Mr. Evasion, and some other tracks. They were quite adventurous. One person who heard them was Norman Smith at EMI, who had been the engineer on a couple of the Beatles albums. We recorded Bracelets of Fingers. I think that was the first thing we, we did. And then Phil particularly came up with this idea of having a story. And I must say, at the end of it, I felt that we'd actually done something reasonably significant. So what do I do? I leave the band. <laughs> what does the cover mean? What does parachute mean? <laughs> but I don't know. Phil was pretty disappointed that I did quit, but then largely he and Wally wrote Parachute, which was a very, very good follow-up. I think it was a hard act to follow SF Sorrow. The idea was to put the current band on the front and ex-members on the back. There were several releases of Freeway Madness, some of which they forgot to put the, the different picture on the back, so it had the same picture on the front and the back. Oh yeah, the front album's cover artwork was designed by Phil. Oh, what a great picture. Now that's a picture actually I'm not familiar with. There were a couple of tracks on here which really stood, I don't know, stood the test of time or whatever. 
you could really see that they they spent quite some time in America at this time, can't you? Uh, a lot of different uh, moods going on in this picture. So I think this was the time when, yeah, Phil definitely befriended Maggie Bell. Phil and I were actually, we did a show with Arthur Brown. In fact, it was one of the very last live things that Phil and I did together. She had to pull out at the last minute because she was unwell, which was a real shame because Phil and her really got on very well. I'm not so sure that he was, he was enjoying, enjoying the band quite as much as he, he maybe had earlier. Um, but having said that, they were still producing really good music. A guy from Holland contacted me and said, would I do a kind of Pretty Things revival gig? That was kind of it. I was back with the Pretty Things. I've done, I think, every other gig since then. Literally, the day before the album came out on Warner's, I happened to have the TV on World in Action came on, and it was about record companies, particularly Warner Brothers, um, basically bribing record, record shops in order to bump sales of, their, of Warner Brothers, Brothers records. So despite it being, I think, one of the best albums that the Pretty Things did, it didn't sell half as much as we, we had hoped. You know, maybe people listen to it and think, well, this is one I missed. A very important figure in the Pretty Things story is Mark St. John. They really liked the Pretty Things as a band and the idea, I think, of the Pretty Things. Got on very well. He came on tour with us to Spain. We seem to develop the habit of wearing black suits. Phil on this one, it looks great. Looking at his ecstatic self, as you always seem to be on stage. Your 10 inch as well. Oh, brilliant. I think that's a version of Play With Fire, which gives uh, Mr. Jagger so, yeah, a run for his money, definitely. Oh, well, there's a picture I haven't seen before. And another one. What a lovely idea. You get all of the tracks which were on the original recording, a 12 inch and a 10 inch again, which is brilliant. That was an interesting track, Blues for Robert Johnson, because we literally started playing it um, and finished up with something which we hadn't really anticipated. And now we get to the pen ultimate. And talking about pen ultimate, this is, of course, Phil May constantly throughout his life. He did artwork, and this is one of his drawings, which he would do with multicolored and um, ballpoint pens. Most and John took a photograph. He never likes anybody smiling in the photograph. Well, I'm ready. This, of course, was recorded after we done the last electric fan show because basically because of Phil's help. Phil and I were doing um, an acoustic portion in the middle of the electric sets and a lot of people were saying you should really recall that. I think that we were pretty aware really that this was going to be the last album that Phil and I were going to do together. And again, it's about a month, very, very tree sweet. 